conclude in just a minute or two, I wanted to let you know first that everybody who's participating in the call today will receive a follow-up email with a copy of the presentation. Additionally, if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we will be able to answer those throughout the presentation. And we also will have a Q&A section at the end. We'll just give it one more minute to let everybody else join. Kevin, just let me know when we're recording and maybe we can get started. Yes, we're on YouTube and you can go ahead. Awesome, thank you so much. Again, everybody welcome today to this uh, rollout webinar for SPIF for the April districts. Uh, my name's Kim Brisky. I'm the Director of Communications at Summer Corps. We administer the program on behalf of the City of Chicago. As two quick reminders again, everybody participating today will receive a copy of this presentation via email afterwards. Additionally, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A uh, chat box below. And now I'm going to turn this over to Nora Curry, who helps in, uh, run the program uh, at this DPD. Thanks so much. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nora Curry. I am the SPIF Program Director at the Department of Planning and Development in the Business Advocacy Division. Um, we are very happy to be with you today. Joining us from Summer Corps, you heard from Kim Brisky and um, also Sylvia Orozco, the SPIF Program Director at Summer Corps, as well as Savannah Allen from Summer Corps. Summer Corps is the Program Administrator uh, contracted with the city to run the SPIF Program. And today we're excited to share some of the new enhancements to the Small Business Improvement Fund, also known as SPIF, which provides grants to small business and property owners to make needed improvements to their property. These changes went into, um, we made some recent changes to the program. They went into effect at the beginning of the year. The first was a robust three-year funding plan, the largest in the program's 20-year history. Um, we funded $60.2 million in 60 TIFs throughout the city. We also made eight new program enhancements. To highlight a few, we've increased the grant amounts that we can give to businesses. For commercial businesses, we increased the grant maximum to from $100,000 to $150,000. For industrial companies, we increased the grant maximum from $150,000 to $250,000. We also increase the reimbursement percentage. So now we can increase, we can reimburse the smallest businesses up to 90% of their project costs. In addition, we're also providing more technical assistance. We have available construction managers and architects for, to assist with your projects. Sylvia Orozco will, from Summer Corps will outline the enhancements in more detail as we move through the overview. And with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Sylvia. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Nora. Thank you for joining us today. Again, my name is Sylvia Orozco. I am the Program Director for the Small Business Improvement Fund. And I'm proud to say that I've worked for Summer Corps in the SPIF program for the past 15 years. So I've assisted hundreds of existing businesses, landlords, and startups. So as Nora mentioned, we are a non-for-profit small business lender that offers SBA 504 loans. We also administer the city SPIF program and the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund program. So now in its 21st year, this is one of the longest running city of Chicago programs. And we've also helped retain and expand small businesses throughout the entire, throughout basically every neighborhood throughout the city of Chicago. And we've dispersed over $100 million in grants. So please be advised that this is a non-residential program. The program cannot be used for capital or actual repair district. So we can now go ahead and get started with today's presentation.
So today our presentation guide post, we will focus on what is SPIT, program mission, the grant parameters, getting started, is your business or property in a SPIT district, which SPIT districts are open and on deck, do you meet the requirements for SPIP eligibilities? What are the program rules? How do you apply? What are the program timelines? What resources are available to help? We'll also go over the April 2021 rollout information and sample projects, SPIP facts, and additional question and answers. So the SPIP program was launched in 1999. The City Small Business Improvement Fund pro promotes economic development by providing small businesses and landlords with reimbursable grants for permanent building improvement costs. Residential projects are not eligible. SPIF grant uses local tax increment financing revenue to reimburse grantees for the pre-approved repair or rehab of business facilities or adjacent land acquisition. Summer course the program administrator contracted by the City of Chicago's Department of Planning and Development. So at this point, I would like to introduce to you Tybin Hernandez. She is the owner of One Stop Beauty Salon, and she will give a few words on her experience about the SPIT program. I'm sorry, it appears we are having technical difficulties. Just one moment, please. Taibin, are you on the line? She is unmuted, but unfortunately, I don't think we can hear her. We apologize for the delay. So if you just want to put the uh, presentation back on the screen and we'll work in the background to try to get the sound working and we'll just continue on uh, with the presentation. Will do, just one moment. Sylvia, why don't you close out and start over? Um, just re uh, just reshare. Yep, and just reshare the presentation. I apologize, everybody, for the delay. <laughs>
Okay, so I guess she's not able to join us or for some reason her audio is off. Okay, so I think we'll continue with the presentation at this point. If for some reason she happens to address the issues, we'll come back and let her say a few words. So now we can get started on the grant parameters, the maximum grant amount allowed under SPIP. So the maximum grant amount allowed for each industrial property is $250,000. The maximum assistance for a single owner or tenant's commercial property or landlord would be $150,000. Max may be granted for multiple owner slash tenant commercial properties of up to $250,000 with a maximum of $75,000 assistance per each tenant or landlord. The applicants may receive one or more grants up to their maximum program assistance. Once the maximum is reached, the applicants will need to wait three years to reapply. Your reimbursement percentage will be determined according to your appropriate application type. The factors to determine these reimbursements will be related to the financial eligibility criteria in which we'll discuss a little bit later in the presentation. So for commercial businesses, if you are a tenant applicant, we take into consideration your gross sales and gross receipts for nonprofits. So if your gross sales or gross receipts fall between zero and $3 million, you'd be eligible for 90% reimbursements. Anywhere between three and $6 million, you'd be eligible for 60% reimbursements. And between six to $9 million in gross sales and gross receipts, you would be eligible for 30% reimbursements. For commercial businesses, if you're a landlord applicant with no interest in the business that's leasing the space, what we take into consideration is based off of your net worth and the liquid asset caps of $500,000 per individual. So if the net worth falls between zero and $3 million, you'd qualify for 90% reimbursements. If net worth is between three to 6 million, you'd qualify for 60% reimbursements and net worth between six to 9 million, you'd qualify for 30% reimbursements. If you are a commercial business that is owner occupied, meaning you own both the business and the property, the above mentioned schedules for both the net worth, sales and all requirements for landlord and commercial tenants apply. So if the applicant should fall between two different categories, you know, if it one falls between 60% and the other one falls between 30, then you'd be eligible for the lesser of the two. And for industrial businesses for both, I'm sorry, for industrial businesses, um, the eligible reimbursement amount is 50% and you must have 200 or fewer employees. So here we have a SPIF grant calculation example. So let's say Grace submits an application for SPIF grants in an open district with a total eligible project cost of $100,000. She's proposing to make permanent building improvements to her existing retail shop for which she is a tenant. So Grace has been in business for five years. Over the past three years, her gross sales have averaged 1.5 million. Her breakdown of eligible costs is as follows. Her eligible project costs are $100,000 as a commercial tenant applicant her gross sales are under $3 million, which means she'd qualify for 90% reimbursement. The responsibility would be 90% at 90,000 and the applicant responsibility would be 10% at $10,000. Does your business, is your business actually eligible to apply? So in order to determine whether or not your property falls within a SPIF authorized TIF district, you can visit our website at summercourt.com slash SPIF. So once you get to the website, you can click here where it says confirm your business is in a SPIF district. That will then take you to a link here at the city's website where you can enter your address and do a search on that specific property. So right below, once that information comes up, it'll tell you whether or not your property is located within a TIF district as well as if there's any anticipated SPIF application dates that are coming up. And it also has the local delegate agencies information. So the local delegate agencies are actually um, contracted to actually help you throughout the entire process with the SPIF program.
So which SPIF districts are open? So we have 95 eligible SPIF districts in the city of Chicago, spanning throughout the north, south, and west sides. So each month marks a new 30-day acceptance period in which funds will be available and open for new applications. So once you actually get to that page, you can check which SPIF districts are open. It'll give you a list of open districts for the current month, as well as the calendar for the remaining year, for the remainder of the year to see when your district will open. Who can apply for a SPIF grant? So business and property owners can apply if they are in a SPIF district within the city of Chicago that are currently accepting new applications for the program. The business owners can own or lease their space of business. Landlords of commercial or industrial properties can also apply and a current city business license will be required. So for a commercial business, if you're owner occupied, the annual sales must total less than $9 million. For industrial business owners, owner occupied, you must have 200. <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. I hope you guys did not hear that. I hear a lot of background noise right now. So for landlords, if the property owner, the property owners must have a combined net worth that does not exceed $9 million in total and the liquid assets cannot exceed $500,000. So example of liquid assets are cash on hand and non-retirement stocks and bonds. This requirement shall apply to industrial businesses that lease any portion of their property to one or more entities, which do not share common ownership in the applicant's business. So if you're a tenant, the annual sales must be less than $9 million with express prior pro property owner approval, meaning that your landlord must sign an affidavit stating that he gives you approval to do work to his property. So what businesses and organization types are ineligible to apply? So some of the businesses that are not eligible include chain and franchise businesses, currency exchange stores, liquor stores, bars, nightclubs, hotels, places of worship. So here you'd see a list of some that are not eligible. It's not comprehensive. So if you're not sure, you can always reach out to us and we'll let you know where your eligibility stands. What improvement costs are eligible for SPIF? The roof and facade, we do components of signage or awnings, which are permanently affixed to the building alterations or structures needed for ADA compliance. So if you're looking to install a rail or a ramp, if you need to have ADA accessible restrooms, widen entryways to make it ADA accessible, things of that nature we can cover with this program, as well as HVAC and other mechanical systems, plumbing and electrical work, certain project related architectural and construction management fees that are related to the project as well as certain environmental remediation measures, permanent interior renovations, including fixtures, and the purchase of adjacent lot parcels for purpose of expansion or parking. So again, this list is not comprehensive. So if there's something that you had in mind, you're not sure whether or not we can cover it, you can always reach out to us and we'll let you know. What improvement costs are ineligible for SPIT? So some of the items that we do not cover are new construction, whether it's an addition or expansion from the ground up, any standalone minor repairs or cosmetics, equipment related expenses such as kitchen appliances, computers, or office furniture. So we do have a couple exceptions with either commercial kitchens or industrial kitchens in which we can cover walk-in coolers and freezers, fire suppression systems, and also exhaust hoods. So all other you know, work that would be done would need to be a permanent renovation to the space. Those are the few items that we can cover that could be considered equipment related. Um, so planters surrounding or affixed to the buildings are not eligible as well as fencing, parking lot construction or repairs, landscaping and other work on interior residential units. So again, it's not comprehensive. If you're not sure, we can always you know, just jump on a call or send us an email and we'll let you know whether or not we can cover those items. What are SPIF design requirements? In order to receive funding, the projects must conform to design requirements, including meeting DPD's design guidelines. All projects shall comply with the design guidelines that 
the additional neighborhood requires as described in the guidelines. You're strongly encouraged to consult with Summer Corps and design professionals on design requirements and guidelines before drawing up plans. We want to make sure that what you're looking to do is eligible before you move forward with any plans, architectural fees, or anything like that. So all applicants that are looking to seek a grant of $25,000 or more, you will be required to make at least one exterior improvement using at least 10% of the maximum amount of your grants. So that can include, but not limited to facade repairs, windows and doors, other exterior improvements. The requirement can be waived at TPD's sole discretion if the applicant can demonstrate that it's satisfactory that no exterior work is needed at the time, either because recent, ex recent improvements have been completed or if the property has been well maintained and the design is consistent with DPD's guidelines. What measures are in place to ensure the applicant compliance is in compliance with the program rules? So we check to see if the property taxes have been paid to date. Checks will be performed, scoff law debts to make sure that there is no debt to the city of Chicago, and you must be in compliance with child support laws. Each applicant will sign an affidavit, an economic disclosure statement affidavit. The grantees will be required to sign an affidavit certifying that they will not relocate outside of the TIF or sell the business within a three-year period following disbursements of funds. So in cases of SPIF reimbursement for land purchase, the proof of land ownership will be required prior to reimbursement. So how do you apply? You can download an application from our website at summercore.com slash SBIF. You'd have to complete the application and send it via email at SPIF at summercore.com within the designated open acceptance period. So what is the SPIF program timeline? So once we begin processing your application, stage one will be where the applicant supplies any missing information to complete their application. You'll be granted 20 days to submit these items. Once it's deemed eligible, you can move forward into the second stage where you'd be required to submit your plans, bids and specifications, as well as cure any debts by the city. So if you owe any taxes, if you owe parking tickets, inspection fees, all of those would have to be paid up to date. And we would give you 120 days to address those issues as well as submit all of the planning materials that are required. So please keep in mind that stage one and two must be completed before the approval of the grant funds can be fully considered. So once everything is satisfactory in stage one and two, you can then move into stage three, where you will then be granted approval. The applicant will be required to provide proof of financing to prove that you have sufficient funds to complete the project. You'd have 120 days to submit the proof of financing, which can be in the form of bank statements showing available funds, or if you're applying for a loan, we can accept a letter of commitment from the lender just stating that you have been approved for the loan and letting us know how much the loan is for. So within that time frame, or I should say the entire time frame of stage three, you're granted 10 months to complete the construction. Or if you're looking to purchase the land, the land would have to be purchased within that time frame. So once the project is completed, you will then move into stage four where we will reimburse based off of your actual eligible cost, not exceeding the maximum that you're eligible for. So unless DPD has granted an extension of time, the applicants who do not complete each stage within the required phase time limit will be disqualified. A maximum of two extensions may be granted with DPD's approval in the case of unavoidable delays due to extraordinary circumstances. So DPD may also on a case-by-case -case basis grant extensions. They will grant additional amount of time to complete any program requirements. So if this is the case, DPD shall have final discretion to determine the appropriate length of time. What is required to deem a project completed and receive funds? So basically once all of the construction that was proposed is completed and you have all of your payment documentation, we will require proof of payments such as sworn statements, 
copies of detailed invoices, canceled checks, and final waivers of lien. Summer Corps will complete a final site visit to confirm that the work has been completed. And you will also be required to submit a copy of your building permit. So once all of these items have been addressed and there's no scoff law debt with the city of Chicago, we can then submit for reimbursement, which usually takes about four to six weeks to be processed by the city. So please note that this will be for non-escrow projects. So what resources are available to you? You can visit our website to access resources to support your SPIP project. So on our website, we have the design guidelines, we have a list of technical assistance, a list of contractors that have been used by previous SPIP recipients, a list of lenders that are familiar with the program, as well as various other small business resources that could be of assistance to you. Get to know your local delegate agency. So these organizations are assigned to assist small business owners in the SPIF districts that will be opening in April of 2021. So please be advised that this information will be sent to you after the webinar is complete. So you will have this information at hand. So get to know them if you have any questions, if you need help completing the materials, if you need help for them actually sending over your application, um, you can always reach out to them. So here are just a few more delicate agencies. So if you're not familiar, you can give them a call, let them know you're interested in the SPIF program and they'll be happy to assist you. So here we have the April 2021 rollout information. These are the SPIF districts that are currently open to accept applications. We will begin accepting, or we will be accepting applications through May 3rd at 5 p.m. So the districts that are open for April include Archer and Western, Jefferson Park, Michigan and Cermak, Portage Park, and Roseland in Michigan. So please be advised that there is a deadline. The applications that are received for this area that are received after the deadline of May 3rd at 5 p.m. will not be accepted. We ask that you complete the applications, fully complete the applications and send them via email at spiff at summercore.com or you can also fax in the application. So here we have a sample project of a recent SPIF recipient that completed a project at his restaurant called La Pena Restaurant out in Portage Park at 4212 North Milwaukee Avenue. So here are a few pictures of the before on the facade, an up close picture and an interior picture of the entryway here. So here we have the after pictures once the work was fully completed, as you can see, it's drastic change on the front side of the building, enhancements to the windows, energy efficiency, gives it a great look. The La Pena, restaurant, La Pena Restaurant's work summary included new aluminum storefront system, HVAC improvements that included new rooftop units, masonry work, including removal and replacement of outer layers of brickwork, furnish and install veneer limestone, and coping stones and lintels. This is just an example of one of our SPIF recipients and some of the work that was completed and eligible for reimbursement. What additional documents should you have on hand to submit along with your SPIF application? So here we have a list of items that will be required. So keep in mind that it, the requirements vary according to your applicant type. So while not everything is required, just take a look at the list and keep in mind that these, if these documents will be required at a later time once we're able to process your application. So if you have some of these items handy, you know, just keep them on reserve so that when we need them, you can just simply send that information over to us. What are the financial requirements to participate in this BIF program? So keep in mind that this is a grant reimbursement. So project participants should be prepared with financing to support the permanent building improvements. So approval of financing is not required until stage three, but you are strongly encouraged to contact your local lender or reach out to any of the lenders that are listed on the Summer Corps website in a timely manner. So as you know, you may not have experience with obtaining a loan, but it could be pretty time consuming. So if you're thinking about it, 
I would say now would be the best time to just get into talks about it. So the grantees may choose to receive their grant funds through an escrow account. This will be available at a later time. DPT in his sole discretion may authorize up to three draws of funding from the escrow accounts that will reimburse an applicant as the work is completed on a project. Any fees that are associated with the use of an escrow account will be taken out of the grant award. Are startups or new businesses eligible? Yes, startups can apply. The startup applicants will need to supply a detailed business plan and projections of businesses' income and expenses for the first 36 months of operation as part of your application materials. So please note that the City of Chicago reserves the right to impose additional conditions for funding in connection with the startup business applications. If you've only been in business for one to two years, Summer Corps requires three years tax returns and a projections of gross sales to equal the three years of data. Are you eligible if you live outside of the city of Chicago? So the important consideration is where you have your business or your property. So if your property is located within a SPIF eligible TIF district, but you live, let's say in the suburbs, you'd still be eligible to move forward. So to participate in SPIF, your property must be within the city. Funding sources comes from the city of Chicago property taxes. So we do not cover any areas outside of the city or outside of any SPIF authorized TIF district. So if you live in another area, you can call your city's planning, economic development, or community development department to see what will be available to assist small businesses in your area. What if your building has both business and residential spaces? So if your property is a mixed use, the program's primarily for business use, but there are mixed use exceptions. So for these buildings, Many envelope projects such as roofing, facade improvements, and tuck pointing can be eligible in addition to the interior of the commercial spaces. Will there be enough SPIF funds for, app for all applicants? Each TIF district that has SPIF authorized and it has limited funds reserved for the program. If the demand for the SPIF funds is greater than the available funding supply, then a lottery will be conducted to determine the order in which a grant application may be accommodated. If any surplus funds become available, they will be allocated to the waitlisted applications. So keep in mind that the word lottery does not determine whether you won or not. It's basically to determine the order in which the applications are processed until we do not have any further funding available. So there's a chance that you can either be fully funded, you can be partially funded, or you can be placed on the waitlist. So if that does happen, the the, I'm sorry, the wait list will be active for two years. So if within that time frame, either someone doesn't use the money that's reserved for them, or if the city happens to replenish funding in that area, the funding goes to the people who are on the wait list before we open the district for new applications. So for applicants that have a property that's located within the Invest Southwest Corridor, they shall be given priority funding and the lottery. The applicants for properties that are within a target corridor shall be second in priority for funding and for the lottery. The remaining grant funds shall be provided to the other eligible applications if there's funding available and they'll be placed on the wait list if not. All applicants in the Invest Southwest Corridor and target corridors will be given priority. Is there SPIF funding available in my district? So again, every SPIF area has its own budget and the city refills it if it has SIF funds available and if there's a demonstrated need for more grant money. You can email summer course team at SPIF at summercourt.com to see if there are funds in your area. We also maintain an interested party list for funds in which you can also send an email to, to the SPIF team when more funding becomes available or the city allocates more funding, we'll let you know via email to let you know that the open acceptance period is available and you can then submit an application. So this list also helps the city gauge the demand for additional funding. So what if you're in a TIF and not in a SPIF? So the TIF is the mechanism that funds the Small Business Improvement Fund program. So if you are in a TIF and it does not have SPIF funding, you're encouraged to contact your alderman. 
And here we have contact information for the Summer Core team, as well as Nora Curry from the Department of Planning and Development. You can visit our website at summercore.com slash spiff for more information on the project. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of our team members. And keep in mind that this presentation packet will be sent to everyone via email within the next 24 hours. So thank you very much. And we can now get started with the question and answer session. Thanks so much, Sylvia. Um, so just to, to quick start off, um, I think that one of the questions that we received was, uh, so we can you kind of explain in a little bit more detail when things like uh, painting or flooring can actually be included as a reimbursable cost versus something that's viewed as cosmetic in a project. Okay, so if you're looking to just add a coat of paint, you know, something simple, we can't cover just a coat of paint. You know, that would be considered too small of a project. But let's say you're doing a full gut rehab, you are changing the layout of your space, you know, if it's in addition to various other items, electrical upgraded systems, you know, in which you have to demolish a, if you have to demolish a wall in order to access, you know, whatever it is that needs to be addressed at that time, then we can cover the painting and other, you know, small things that would otherwise be considered cosmetic. So if you just like a simple new coat of paint, just, you know, a new layer of flooring, just give it a nice fresh look, that will not be covered. But if it's part of a bigger project, we can include those costs. Great. Um, and then what if uh, a, a borrower or a potential client has actually already started a project, already has some of the work done, uh, can they still apply? Can that work still be reimbursed? Unfortunately not. If you've already done the work, then we cannot assist you in that matter. If there is something that is still pending, you know, if, for example, you need the HVAC system to be replaced if you have not done that work yet then you know if you can hold off until you're actually approved then we would be able to get that approved but if anything's already been paid for or completed we cannot assist for those items okay great uh, uh so another question is how many times can one person uh apply for spiff so it all depends on what your previous disbursements were. So if someone applies, if they reach the maximum grant amounts, then there's a three-year waiting period. You'd have to wait three years in order to apply again. So let's say you do not reach the maximum grant amount that you're eligible for. You can reapply up until you reach the max, and then you'd have that three-year waiting period again. So let's say you're eligible for 150, you apply, you get a grant for 50,000, Nine months down the road, you know, you need to install a new electrical upgrade to your property, then you'd be eligible to apply for the difference, which would be the $100,000. Okay, great. And another question, uh, can you expand on the type of signage that could be eligible for uh, a SPIF grant? Yeah, so with the signage, we can cover the structural permanent aspects of the sign. Anything that is business related, we can't cover. So if you're looking to do something like the nice channel letters, I love that style, but unfortunately it is business specific. So we would not be able to cover those. Let's say for example, you're looking to do a box lit sign. So we can cover the box, we can cover the installation, the electrical work to light up the sign. Those items we can cover, but what we can't cover is the plastic panel that will have the business specific information that cost will just need to be deducted from the total eligible cost. That's super helpful, thanks. Uh, another question we've got a few times is, uh, are you able to apply at the same time for both SPIF and NOF? As well for NOF, that does, uh, the actual application period ends next Friday now for anybody interested. <laughs> okay, so we cannot move forward with applications for both. You know, we'd have to, we can accept the applications, but if we know that one is applying for both, you know, you'd have to get to a point where you'd make a decision to say, okay, this SPIF program benefits me more. You know, with the NOF, there is a selection process, so it's a little bit harder to obtain funding through that. With the SPIF, it's basically if you meet the eligibility requirements and you're in compliance, you can obtain the grant. So, you know, you can apply for both, but you cannot proceed with both applications. 
at one point you will need to determine which one you want to go with, whether it's BIF or NOF. Great. And, and I think, and if you uh, do uh, eventually potentially use them in succession, would there be some type of limit in terms of how much more city dollars you can access if you did receive one of these grants in the past? Yes. So basically, if you received a grant in the past, we would have to deduct that amount from the total amount that you'd be eligible for now. So, you know, it may be where you've reached the mid limits and you can't get any additional funding, or if there's still a balance there, then you could receive that balance. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, a little specific is, can I proceed with non-covered repairs, for example, for a mixed use building, so it's a residential portion. So can they proceed with those repairs before applying for covered renovations through SPIF? Yes, yes. We will not cover those, so we will not hold up your project if you're looking to do residential work. You can proceed with that. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, this is a, a, sorry, a very specific question here. So if somebody has a commercial property that they want to actually do uh, add on a headquarters on top of the building, if they actually take care of building the new structure, can they apply specifically to SPIF for the finishes? Think this could no, that would still be considered new construction, which would not be eligible for reimbursement. Okay, next question. Um, are after school centers eligible for SPIF? Yes. I mean, we'd have to take into consideration the other items that we look at, you know, gross sales or receipts. You know, there's other factors that play into it, but off the top, yes, we can't cover those types of organizations. And just again, for clarification, uh, can you just talk about when, uh, like how the SPIF funding schedule works in terms of the 30, 30 day uh, rollout periods and how often different districts come up and when? Okay, so we do currently have the calendar for the remainder of the 2021 um, SPIF district funding. So you can find that information on our website. So every TIF district has a separate amount of funding so if the funding is available, then chances are that we will be reopening that district this year. If there's no funding available, then it may be opening in the next year or two. So it all depends on whether or not we have funding available. And if there's demand in that area, then we'll put that on the calendar for opening up again. So if you're not, if you're in a TIF district and it's not open, you can always sign up for our interested parties list and as a courtesy, we'll send you an email to let you know when that district opens. And you can also sign up for our e-newsletters, which goes out every month and it'll give you notifications for districts for the current month, as well as advanced notification for districts for the upcoming month. Great, uh, again, I, I was gonna say, before we close out here, that seems to be all I have for questions, but uh, Sylvia, do you wanna try going back to our testimonial page? And we're gonna try one more time. I think Bibi's on the line. So I'm gonna try to see if she can unmute and, and talk a little bit about her experience with the program um, and uh, let's see if that'll work. If not, we'll close it out here. Say, so, Bibi, can you hear me? Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Oh, great, we can hear you. And I will, hooray. <laughs> and um, I will um, ask you to start your video too. And then we can just have you talk a little bit about your experience. That would be great. You're muted again. Oh, there you go. All right. All right. Perfect. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you so much awesome. for joining us today. <laughs> Hi everyone, sorry about that. Um, my name is Tyvin Hernandez, I go by BB. I'm the owner of One Stop Salon on Division Street in Humboldt Park. We're best known for our eyelashes and eyebrows on the west side. I'm getting ready to launch One Stop Beauty School on Milwaukee Avenue in Portage Park. It will be a licensing school for nails and aesthetics. Um, initially, I was intimidated by all the rules and requirements of the grant, but SummerCore and Sylvia were always an email or phone call or way to answer my questions or direct me to the right resources. So to be reimbursed up to $100,000 meant just do whatever the grant required you and you'll get it. The initial estimate of my project was $175,000. After architectural plans came back, the bids came back at $300,000. So the SPIF grant of $100,000 made it uh, possible and gave me the capital to complete my project. 
Um, I grew up in Portage Park. After college, I came back and raised my kids in the same house I grew up in. So I'm grateful to bring One Stop Beauty School back into my community. Um, during a time like this, where there's so many who are lost without jobs, bringing a business that will cultivate entrepreneurship, I think can ignite a new trend of making a living on your own terms. So bringing One Stop Beauty School to Portage Park with the help of the SPIF grant is a great investment to the community and it's a good program. Thank you so much for that testimony. Thank I'm so glad that, that we were able to work. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you can see on the screen um, the before and after pictures. And I was going to say, Sylvia, do you know offhand a little more details about the project uh, in terms of what kind of work was done? Yeah, so basically this was a full gut renovation to both the facade interior and also the basement. So the pictures that you see to the right hand side are the before and afters of the basement renovation. So it included new electrical system, HVAC systems, new layouts, new flooring, basically everything was completely redone. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate uh, everybody here today. I don't see any other questions. And so with that, I think we will uh, end the presentation. As a quick reminder to everybody, uh, we want to say just again, thank you for joining us. We will be sending around an email with the presentation, which you can refer to at any time. We encourage you to connect with your appropriate delegate agency or ask us any questions if you have them. And uh, with that, we will let you get back to your day. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, everyone.